everyone and welcome to the rookie draft review team administration team information discussion and also a special announcement at the end of the video yes i am doing an announcement at the end of the video to make sure everybody is watching the video i will not give but one reminder damn it in the messenger and i won't tell you which day about the special announcement so stay tuned absolutely do not fast forward to the end and find out what <laughs> watch the content first How's everybody doing? I'm the commissioner, a.k.a. Mr. Modest, a.k.a. reigning champ. I have the trophy right here. Joel, as always, I'm kissing the trophy. Mwah, it's awesome. I love it. I love being champion, and I love being champion two years in a row. Joel Gibson, how are you? I'm well. I'm well. I'm missing that, uh, that trophy over there, but... I do take uh, pleasure in knowing that you're kissing that, and I've done disgusting things to that trophy. So I have also. You lice, hopefully, you lice all it first. Oh, I definitely did. Yeah, it's had to been uh, sterilized a few times. Also, Matt had it for a year, so you know how long it took me to get that shit clean. <laughs> like, <laughs> gross. Yeah, it's never been the same. All right, well, we're going to try to go through these. Uh, we're going to do a rookie draft review. Um, since we don't have a regular draft to review this year, we're going to go through and tell you what we think about these rookie picks. It should be a good time. Um, Joel, let's just start with the first pick. Let's get right into it here. Uh, Kyle takes Victor Wembenyama. Um, I don't think that there was any other option but to take him and see, right? Yeah. Uh, no, that was definitely the play. Fuck. Uh, that was definitely the play. Uh, anyone who had eyes was going to take Victor uh, with the number one pick. Um, I'm trying to pull up his roster right now so we can see how much he uh, actually costs. I believe uh, 29 for this one. Yep. Uh, you right on that. So, uh, yeah, pretty easy pick. Yep. Uh, next one. Not a lot to say about that one. It's uh, wait and see. Um, I will say... I am interested to see what they do with his minutes this season. I said this to you. Um, he's going to be a great pick. A lot of people are dra drafting him in the third round of redraft leagues. For me, that's too high. Now, we'll see at the end of the season. And Kyle, if I'm wrong, you can shout me out and at me and uh, whatever you got to do, bro. But I think he's only a top 50 player this season, not a top 30. I would not take him in the third round. There's still it's still pretty impressive because there's not a lot of rookies that crack the top fifty. So, yeah, uh, even so, it's a good pick. I agree. Next one is number two. Now, this one uh, is definitely interesting. I would have also picked this guy. Uh, Scoot Henderson goes at number two. Now, this is really interesting to me because if Lillard is not traded, where and how many minutes is Scoot getting? It is pretty interesting, but you know what? Dame's pretty good off the ball. He can catch and shoot uh, with the best of them. So yeah. I think there's going to be minutes, minutes for skewed out there no matter what. I think there'll be some. I would be really interested to see if he's worth, what, the $21 price tag? 20, $24. $24 price tag, um, at least in, until Dame is traded. Once Dame is traded... Everything's fine. He's definitely worth that 24, at least to see if he's going to be this good. Um, but uh, I think there's a lot there. There's a lot of interesting things going on with that pick. For sure. Uh, it might not pay off until later down the line. Right. One thought I had was, uh, if I don't think I would have done this if I were Kyle, but it would have been pretty interesting if he had taken both the Thompson twins at the top of the draft. Yeah, uh, that <laughs> it would be for a much cheaper price tag. That's for sure. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't know if I would have done that either. Um, you could have maybe convinced me for the next pick, Amir Thompson, to go over Scoot Henderson, depending on your team build and timeline. I would say that maybe you could convince me to pick a Thompson over Scoot. 
Uh, but you have to tell me 100% that Dame's like not getting traded. And a lot of things have to happen for me to actually do it. But I do love Jake taking a man at number three. Um, he's looked great. I like both of the Thompson boys. Um, so I have no objection to Jake doing that. Yeah, and a $9 price tag. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, J he fits Jake's timeline. So I, I think while this wasn't the easiest pick, um, it's definitely a good one that's going to pay off down the line. Yeah, and I just want to shout out Jake is already making an argument for being a better manager of this team than Eric. <laughs> <laughs> because if you'll remember this time last year, Eric was taking LeBron with the 11th overall pick and really putting Jake behind the eight ball. Um, so shout out to Jake for moving this team in the right direction. Man, imagine if he had taken just like a second round player <laughs> to, pair, to pair with Anthony Edwards. It's just a different team. Yeah, just absolutely a different team. Uh my goodness, and the people that were available at that time. Shea was still on the board at that time. Uh, just just crazy. But uh, shout out, Jake. I like that. Now we get to Steven. Steven takes Brandon Miller from Charlotte. When we talked about the rookies, I said there was a lot of value traps out there. I think that this was the value trap. I like Brandon Miller. And you can attest to that because I talked to you all off season. But I 100% would not have picked him over Walker or Thompson. Those are the next two picks. I would not. And I might even make the argument on Taylor Hicks. Close. It's close. But for me, he's just too hollow. He needs a lot of volume to be effective, be an effective scorer. You've got Miles Bridges there. They re-signed P.J. Tucker. There's a ton of, like back up there for him to get legitimate minutes. He's not going to go in there and play 30 minutes right away. He It might take him a couple years to get to that, especially if Miles is any good whatsoever. Well, so, I mean, <clears throat> if Steven is looking to build two years down the line, then this might be a good pick, actually. <laughs> okay. Because, uh, I, I mean... Uh, if Brandon Miller, like two years from now, the Hornets are going to look different. Miller might not throw up stats this year, but I don't think Steven is going to be competing for a championship this year. Right. Um, I, I don't know this is a pick that I would have made, um, but I, I think you described him as diet Jason Tatum before, and if he turns out to be like 60% of that, Two years from now, three years from now, it's not a bad pick, but uh, especially since he probably shouldn't be looking to win right now. Right. Uh, shout out to Steven. Hey, you, you do you, boo-boo. Don't listen to me. Uh, I often don't know what I'm talking about. Next pick, Doug. Uh, Doug breaks your heart uh, <sighs> and takes Walker. Um Man, for me, I get it. I get why I get why definitely you wanted Walker, but I'm still probably taking Thompson over Walker. Uh unless unless you're in the camp that like Turner is getting traded this year. If you're in that camp, I can see the argument for taking Walker 100%. I can see the argument. But if Turner doesn't go anywhere, Thompson was still on the board playing for Detroit where there is a ton of minutes there um, for him to play unless you really believe in like Lively or whatever. If you were so impressed with him when uh, he led my team in the playoffs last year for like three days, if you remember, where he was just shooting lights out. Um, if you believe in that Lively... Uh, again, maybe the argument, but uh, I, either way, I don't hate the pick. Um, yeah, I was surprised he went here. Um, I, I was hoping that Walker would be around. Um, I wasn't like dead set on it, um, but honestly, the fact that uh, one of the to the other Thompson twin was still around uh, is really what got me salivating. Um, but 
I think he's an interesting pick. And also, I, I've been following a lot of Pacers stuff this offseason. I don't think Miles Turner is going anywhere this year. I think they're going to compete for the playoffs. And I think they're actually going to be pretty fucking good. I, I'm going to watch a lot of Pacers ball this year. Is that because losers. Is that because you have Halliburton? And Turner. And Turner. <laughs> okay. So then mostly if I need Pacer advice, I'm going to go to Joel, and he's kind of confirming my suspicions of – Turner's probably not going to get traded. So if that's the case, if I'm trying to win now, definitely the Thompson boy would have been the good pick. Now, Cody, the next pick, he's not necessarily trying to win now either. Um, But he definitely makes the right pick here. Uh, Thompson, I can't make an argument um, for Hendricks, George, or Black going before him. And it's really interesting uh, when we talk about these rookies because remember that, like, maybe three or four of them will be relevant moving forward at all. Period. At all. Um, Not a lot of rookies go and make it. So it's really interesting to see who finds the uh, diamond in the roughs. Joel, you on Thompson. Uh, I was really hoping that Thompson wouldn't go here. I think this is a great pick. Um, eleven dollars is a nice price point for him, um, and he could be a top four player from the draft. So great place to grab him for Cody. Um, I, I was really fucking pissed that Cody got him, but I, I knew that's what was going to happen. Right, and then uh, next you took Hendrix. Uh, it was funny before you picked. I posted on the messenger. I don't know if you read what I posted. I did. Uh, I totally told everybody that I could guess who you were going to pick, and I was right on it. Um, and let me tell you, I have been buying a lot of Hendrix stock. Um, that guy can shoot. He can. Um, he doesn't have the best handle, but he can move a little bit like a three, and he's got the size of a four. So I, I've, I've been watching a lot of his highlights. I, I like him. I think he's going to be – a nice piece for me long term, and it's going to be interesting watching him and John Collins battle it out. You want to know what uh, I found most interesting about the rookie draft so far, um, and at least in people that I've, you know, talked to and everything about their picks, you know, and stuff like that. Um, as soon as you pick a player, you all of a sudden are so pro that player; it's insane. <laughs> because like when we get to me, and we'll get there. <laughs> I kind of have the same reaction, and I had picked 16. So this is definitely the guy. <laughs> this is definitely the guy that's going to get there. I know it for sure. Um, anyway, next pick is Matt uh, Keontae George. I like this pick a lot. Um, I'm not really sure who's going to play point guard in Utah. Everybody says it's going to be Clarkson. They're going to do whatever. Sexton, like, what are they going to do at point guard? What if they just start the rookie? Like, what do they have to lose? He's $6. I, it might happen, but I don't think it's going to happen to start the season. Um, I, it's an interesting pat, pick by Matt, um, but I personally didn't love it. Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, just Just believing that he's not ever going to get to that starting point guard job. I, maybe next year, but I, I think I, I'm just not that high on what I've like seen and what I've read. Okay. Uh, next one, Phil had back-to-back picks. He took Anthony Black and Bilal Kalabali. Kalabale? Kalabale? And I apologize if I butcher any names. Um, I I don't like the Anthony Black pick. And this is the reason why I don't like it. This is the first one where I'm like, I wouldn't have touched Black with a 30-foot pole, okay? And here's why. For the last two to three years, you and I have been arguing about the Orlando front court, or, 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 right? Backcourt. Backcourt. Thank you. Good Lord. And I, I literally just got backward and forward on my own, like, brain. It was nuts. Anyway, uh, backcourt. Uh that has not resolved at all. Anthony, Foles, Suggs. Like, where on earth is Black going to fit? They, they've they got uh, Boncaro, who's taking all their usage anyway. 
why why even like roll the dice unless you're telling me that two of those three are going to get traded and all of a sudden that black is going to become like the guard of the future also gary harris is still there taking minutes uh, apparently gary harris is starting at the three this year that's what i've heard well the reason i didn't like the pick is because fultz is gonna be a fucking monster this year <laughs> <laughs> this is the year, baby. Okay. It was the number one pick. Sure. Took him a little bit. He's a late bloomer. Sure. Classic late bloomer. You know, he got the yips, but this is the year, baby. Okay. So, Anthony Black, go spend some time in the G League, son. Also, what the fuck is his team name again? Uh, is he Luca? It's Luca the Flick. He's Luca. Yeah. Yep. He's uh, Luca so- de Flicka de Rista. <laughs> He like should have put an A at the end of that. It doesn't flow right. Um, and then Belial. Probably is $2. Yeah, I don't hate it just because, like, who knows who's coming out of Washington with any kind of success. Like, it could be anybody. you got Corey Kisper taking legitimate minutes as a backup who only shoots threes and that's it. That's all he does. He's got no defensive skills at all. He's short. For a three, and all he does is shoot threes. He gets minutes, okay? He was on my team last year, too. I, lo- I loved it. I just... <laughs> like, <laughs> he's getting minutes in Washington. Literally anybody can get minutes in Washington. Here's what I'll say. Um, the Anthony Black pick, I didn't like it. You didn't like it. But there are people that are high on Anthony Black. I read somewhere, um, it was like, I can't remember if it was Roto World. But it was somewhere where they compared his court vision to uh, Josh Giddy, which I thought was ridiculous. Okay. Um, but there are people that really like Anthony Black. So at $5, maybe this pick pans out and we're both just wrong. That's true. Fine. I, I totally get it. Anything on uh, Belial? Not really. Uh, $2 is a fine gamble, but I, I'm not huge. I, I don't have like... I haven't watched much of them. I don't have crazy expectations. All right. Next one is Adam. We're at pick 11, Cam Whitmore um, in Houston. Uh, it could probably work out. Probably a little early. Uh, probably a little early. Yeah, it could work out. I don't think it will. Like, again, I just don't know where the minutes are coming from. Like, they already have a Kevin Porter Jr. problem over there. I A little early is what I would say. Yeah, there's also Tori Eason. It, I, I don't know. Uh, Cam Whitmore went too late in the real NBA draft, but he probably went too early in this draft. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he went just right at a dollar because um, he looked pretty good in summer league. We'll just have to see how much they actually play him. Um, but I, I think Dylan Brooks might get in the way of his playing time, which is really a bummer. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, Dylan Brooks, good Lord. And then Freddie's still there. Like, there's just so much that he has to get through to even be, like, a rotation piece, let alone a a big piece. You know what I mean? Um, Next two are from Neiman. Now, get ready for heartbreak because I can tell you that I was heartbroken. Um, Neiman, first of all, the biggest tease on the planet because – his first pick, and I knew who Adam was picking. I knew he was picking Bates. He's a fucking Cavaliers fan. I knew it. And then I didn't think that Phil was going to take any other rookie. And if he did, he would take Lively because he has Luka. Everything was set up, Joel Gibson. Everything was set up, start to finish. Neiman first picks Grady Dick as in <laughs> Toronto. Okay. <laughs> Okay, there is no way that Jackson Davis is on his radar. There's no way, if he's taking Dick here, there is no way that he has any idea who Jackson Davis even is. I am convinced that he Googled, like, good rookies to take. (laughs) And I am so pissed. 
because he literally the whole time I'm texting you, I'm like, my guy's still out there. He's going to fall. And he would have fallen. He would have got the whole way to 16 in the rookie draft. I am so upset. I'm so upset. There's no there's no front court in Golden State right now. And if Dre sits, he's going to be electric in a dollar. He is by far the steal of the draft for me. 100% at 13. He's the steal. I have watched no Trace Jackson Davis. Um, I think what's funniest that you left out is that Neiman made the, the Grady deck pick, and then he just put it on hold. He was like, all right, guys, I need some time. <laughs> and you had all that time to feel like you were in the clear, but you weren't in the clear. Uh, I, I really just felt like I had to get past him. And again, it could turn out that he is not going to be good whatsoever. But he was the one that I picked. And let me tell you, even at eight, nine, I was still taking him. I was the whole way down at 16 and getting the opportunity at him. And it didn't happen. I wasn't happy. I'm still not happy. Clearly, fuck you, Neiman. Love the great dick pick. <laughs> Amen on the Grady Dick pick. Next one is Adam. Like I said, he took Bates. Of course he did. I think his Venmo is literally like Ohio sports fan or something like that. I knew he was going there. God damn it. And then anything on Bates. Anything on Bates. <laughs> I mean, I would love to see it work out, you know, us being Cavs fans, but, um, it's just not super, uh, super hopeful. The high school tapes are ridiculous, but the college tapes are pretty disappointing. So maybe, maybe, maybe he's a late bloomer, but um, I, I think this was pretty early to take a swing on him. Next pick is Phil, and I knew he was going to take Lively. I actually really like Lively, especially if you had a two to three year time horizon at $5. He's going to be the center of the future there. I've read a ton on him. I really like him. He's going to be the future center there. And at $5, even if he's getting... He's got fucking pow to compete with there. They didn't re-sign um, Christian Wood. Like, there's a ton of front court minutes there for him. He's young. And, like, Luka and Kyrie don't really need anybody out there except to set picks. You know what I mean? Uh, so I think he's going to get a lot more minutes this year, but give him two to three years. I think he's going to be a great player. Yeah, I, I'm confused by that center rotation. Um, they also have Rashawn Holmes. Um, yeah, but, but come on now. Uh, I mean, Rashawn Holmes isn't a bad player, dude. Uh, yeah. You can hate on him, but he's not a bad player. But he didn't play a lot last year, and... Sacramento really needed a rim protector. So uh, maybe he has lost a step. Um, I, I just don't know how much Lively is going to play this year because it feels like Dallas needs to win now. Yeah. Um, so maybe, I mean, maybe best case scenario is he gets traded somewhere and he gets to play right away. Right. But I think it's a good pick. And at $5, I like the price point. Yep. Uh, next one is Mr. Modest. Instead... I took Kaysan Wallace, and let me tell you, since taking Kaysan Wallace, <laughs> I have completely bought in that he is somehow going to crack into that starting rotation in Oklahoma City, for sure. Um, at least he'll get 20 minutes on the six-man year and maybe try uh, for six-man of the year. Like, this guy... He put up, like, 30 shots in two games in Summer League. I mean, come on, dude. Uh, have you heard of Jalen Williams? <laughs> He's really, really, really good. I I just, I don't know. They're, they're trading Giddy like a lot of shit's going to happen, and he is going to blow up, bro. We'll see. I, I think that it might not be for a couple of years. It's really interesting because the competition is pretty steep. Uh, it, it's pretty steep in OKC this year. I really like them. Is 
a team to gain a lot of wins this year. But uh, I think it's a good spot for him. And at a dollar, it's definitely worth the bid. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, it's at 16. It's literally just a swing. Like, uh, uh, who knows what's going to happen. I don't hate it. But I was really hoping for Jackson Davis. So... In the future, if I ever go, oh, thank God I took case on when I did because there is nobody I wanted more at the time. You can say bullshit. You you wanted Jackson Davis and be like, oh, in your face. Uh, next one is Tumani Kamara. Uh, we'll see on that. Uh, I don't. Who was that too? That was to Matt. Um, from okay. Phoenix, I think it's fine. Like, it's a good swing. If Aiton gets traded, it's even more interesting. But uh, we'll see how it goes. I just don't know how much usage he's going to get, so I don't know how much he's going to actually do. And defensively, there's just a ton of people out there, and they run a ton of transition. So I, I just I don't know where he fits in. Yeah, I, I know nothing about him, but this is a that Phoenix team is a win now team. So probably just someone is going to sit on his rookie reserve, I would think. Yeah. Uh, next one's you, Leonard Miller. You love athleticism. That's that's all you bet on. You're like, is he athletic? Fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. So I I actually have reasons for this pick. Okay. So, um. Josh Lloyd had him as a top 10 prospect in this draft. And at this point, it's worth taking a swing on anyone who might be in the top 10. But he specifically uh, said, this guy I, is just all athleticism, <laughs> and that's it. Like, <laughs> I know, I know. But here's the thing. This is the second round. Okay. This, might, this is basically just a dollar not spent of free agency money. Right. I really like Minnesota as a team that's going to probably make a move this year and move some parts, and he might go to a better situation, or his situation might open up. Um, I, I'd like to read what... <laughs> oh, God. You came with a reading for this? This yes. is the second round. This is the middle of the second round. All right, Ready? <laughs> So, this is what Fantrax had to say. Miller is a raw talent out of the G League. The six foot, the six foot nine forward has shown an ability to thrive off of athleticism, off, uh, off of athleticism wow. and ball handling ability. Sorry, I'm struggling. <laughs> but most of his game is unpolished, which also makes him a bit of a positionless, not in a good way. <laughs> I've already read this. I knew it was coming. I love it. His three ball is subpar and his defense is inconsistent. But the flashes of athletic brilliance, solid mid-range shooting, and decent passing are enough for Minnesota to take a gamble. I am all in, baby. <laughs> it literally said in the article, or in the little uh, report, not in a good way. <laughs> if, if your rookie reports include the phrase, not in a good way, do not draft, okay? Do not draft. I'm all in, baby. Here we go. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, next one we had Hood Skispano. Uh, I have no idea how you pronounce it. It was a homer pick by CJ. Uh, it wasn't a good one, in my opinion. No. No, I, uh, I don't know anything about that player, but I, I, they're uh, pretty deep, actually for rotation players, and they're not playing their young guys over there. Nope, not at all. Um, I would have taken uh, who Doug took, and that's Buffkin. Um, mm. If they break up if they break up Trey and DeJounte in a year or two, Buffkin could be extremely interesting um, if he grows into it. Again, it's one of those things where – he showed some spark, but, like, does he develop enough to be there? I don't know. I don't know what comes back if you break up Trey and DeJounte. I have no idea. Does DeJounte get injured? Uh, I have no idea, and you know a little bit more about the Hawks, right, than I do because, no, you've got Sharp, who is uh, Portland, right? Mm -hmm. But they also have A.J. Griffin, who is young and is, like, a 2-3. I was about to say, I always think of him as a 3. But either way, if they decide if they decide that DeJounte or 
even Trey are outside their timeline. They're going to build around Buffkin and Griffin and just see how it goes. So, I mean, there's some upside there. I don't hate it from Doug. No, this was the player that I really considered taking over Miller um, and might bite me in the ass. Um, but we'll see. I, I like the pick by Doug. Yep. Uh, Steven decided to forfeit his next pick. Um, so we go to Jake. He took James Najee from Charlotte. Um, too many cooks in the kitchen for that center rotation in Charlotte. And I really think they like Mike Williams a lot. I think it's Mark Williams. Mark, but... Mike. A uh, Mike Williams is football. Sorry, it is Mark. You're right. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, second round, no harm, no foul. Uh, you know, we're taking a gamble. That Charlotte team is not very good. Right. Uh, next one is Keontae Johnson from OKC to Kyle. Um, yeah, there was a snafu with this pick. Kyle, like, was jokingly saying, oh, nobody took him from, uh, I believe it's NC State. Uh, but he never formally picked him. And so we get to 24 hours later, and I'm like, uh, at noon, I'm like, Kyle, well, actually, I gave him an additional six hours before I said anything to Cody because we were having Cody's draft. Um, I said nobody was picked, so Kyle forfeits uh, his pick, obviously. Um, well, Kyle, like I said, obviously I wanted to take him. I kind of saw his side, but... I did charge him the one dollar in free agent money to make this pick, so, <laughs> so I feel like it was a fair compromise in this situation. But in the future, when we're picking, you should physically be saying, "I am picking this person. I pick this guy. I am picking Bot." Like it, it, it's it, it's pretty straightforward. Don't give me a sarcastic. I can't believe nobody's picked him yet. Because I don't know if that's sarcastic or not. I knew Kyle's wasn't. But I also couldn't be like, oh, he's definitely picking him. Especially because Cody, after the pick, said, why don't you pick him then? And then nothing from Kyle. I easily could have said, no, you're not getting him, Kyle. But out of the goodness of my heart, I looked into the trophy, the trophy's eyes, and I said, Kyle could have the pick. Man, that was so generous that you gave him that second round pick. I know. I'm sure it's really going to make a big difference in the long term scheme of things. Absolutely. And I charged him the $1 free agent money. Next time, Kyle, it's $2. I will not play games. Um, but a fine pick, whatever. These last two, it's just upswing. Like the nice thing, Cody picked Chris Murray at the end, who is Keegan Murray's brother. Why not? Let's just see what happens. It could be a situation where uh, Giannis and all Giannis and all his brothers get to keep playing in the NBA because he's the uh, one of the best in the league. So maybe Keegan can hold the mantle for Chris as well. Doubt any of these second round players are going to work out, but maybe one or two do. Maybe one or two do, and whichever one of or two of you that did it, congratulations. Uh, next thing we're just going to run through real quick is the caps for everyone. Kind of give everybody an idea, and then I gotta we got to wrap up here. Uh, oh, only 33 minutes. It could have been worse, quite honestly. Yeah. Um, next, first we'll start with, now there are only three players above the cap, so I'd like to take this time to specifically say them. Uh, Kyle, you are $6 over the cap. Phil, you are $1 over the cap. And Jake, you are $9 over the cap. Now, all three of you, should you stay this way, would only give up 50 free agent dollars, okay? Um... Because I do not believe it's any of the three of you's second year over the cap. I think you're all in the first year. So just keep that in mind. If I do need to correct that, like maybe Phil was over the cap last year, but I don't think so. I think he was under it. Um, we're not penalizing Jake. And then Kyle, I believe, was also under the cap. Um, but I will confirm that. So let's just assume if you don't have yourself under the cap, 
before the first day of games and you play a, a player, that's when the tax kicks in. So everybody keep that in mind. Um, Joel, congratulations for being under the cap. Yeah, baby. <laughs> we did it. You did do it. Uh, with that in mind, you're actually second on the list anyway. So you have $4 in cap space. Um, Doug has $5 in cap space, CJ $12 in cap space, Adam $38 in cap space. Oh my God. We could see a big spender come free agent time from Adam. Maybe that was his plan after he traded, uh, to me, he just wanted to get a whole bunch of cap space and then he's going to take everybody's free agents. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> Neiman has $9 in cap space. Steven has $4 in cap space. Cody, you have $9 in cap space. Matt, you have $11 in cap space. And I have $2 in cap space with conveniently two roster spots to fill. Wow, it's like I planned it. It's incredible. I'm just so happy to have cap space this year. <laughs> I'm kind of bummed because of the Trey Murphy news. Like, he is taking up $3 of my cap space, and I just can't drop him because he's $3 and he's going to be a monster in the years to come. I mean, you could. I I could, yeah, I could. Uh, but I'm not going to. <laughs> so, all right. Sure? So I'm sure. So the last thing about uh, our special announcement, Joel Gibson, mm -hmm. We are not willing to wait any longer to put our free agent bids in. So I, as commissioner, am activating free agency to take place starting Sunday. This coming Sunday, a week from now. Yes, you heard me right. Um, this is why I told you to wait, you know, till the end of the video. I hope you didn't fast forward here. If you did... Go back and listen to our stuff about the rookies. It is excellent. It is excellent. Captivating. It is absolutely captivating. We give real hard-hitting takes on each rookie that you drafted. So go now. Ah, okay. Um, Saturday night, you can start, well, technically, Saturday after 11 a.m. So just like our schedule with everything else, you can start putting your free agency bids in. Now, I do want this to be clear. Your ads for the week will be reset before week one. So you will still have seven ads for your entire week one. You can do whatever free agent moves that you want to do, as many as you want to do. Just keep in mind that you are using the free agency money that you have. OK, so like I said, if you have a lot of cap space, you know, you can go out there and spend a lot of money. Um, remember the rule that you must drop the player before midnight in order to be able to claim them the next day. Um, so just in case anybody tries that, Doug, I know, tried it uh, last year during the playoffs effectively, if you ask me. Uh, but he did do it. Um, but outside of that, anything on free agency or Joel, any questions that you think people might have about free agency? I don't think so. I think it's pretty straightforward. I can't fucking wait. Excellent. I need to fill two roster spots. So I will definitely be out there trying to spend my $2 wisely. Um, I'm just Pick interested... Your I'm just interested to see there are only three teams with double digit cap space out there. And that is a ton of cap space just based on everybody else's cap space. Um, so I'm interested to see what those teams do, who they take. Um, just make sure to leave some crumbs for those with only one dollar to bet on players. Um, but outside of that, I'm, I'm excited. We are what, six, seven weeks from the season. Uh, I think six, six, might be six. six, might be six, might be seven. Not sure. 
Um, either way, I can't wait to get back to winning again, Trey Murphy or not. The champ is coming, and he is coming hard. Yeah, if I know anything about you, with two dollars of cap space, you're about to drop four dollars on Colin Sexton. So. <laughs> you actually know nothing about me, then. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. If you have any questions about free agency, let me know. I will give one reminder in the messenger, but it's going to be like fucking Friday or Saturday morning. Uh, I'm not going to keep reminding everybody all week. You should at least watch the videos a little bit. Okay. Um, Joel, thanks for joining me. As always, I'm your commissioner, your reigning champ. I am keeping that rookie reserve list this year. Just in case you need to know who's on your rookie reserve. Um, outside of that, everybody have a good night. Take care.